Welcome to historic Hershey Park Arena, the eighth and final game of the busy championship weekend. PCN privileged to present exclusively the 2001 PNAA Basketball Championships. The main event, the Red Raiders of Coatesville out of the East playing Shenley out of the Pittsburgh City League District 8, our champions coming out of the West in boys quad A. Good evening, everyone. Jed Donahue, delighted to bring in, as always, the coach. Gary, up and down we go here in the final show of the evening. Well, you've got a team that's returning here from the Pittsburgh City League. It has been since the 1970s. Hard to believe the days of Maurice Lucas and company back in the 60s. But this is the team, Shenley, back in here. The power had moved to Erie. Now it's from Pittsburgh this year. On the other side, a Coachville team that's tickled around this tournament has never made it to a final, is looking for their first state championship tonight. It's going to be an interesting up-and-down track race here this evening as both teams like to run the floor and put pressure. And John Allen out of Coachville, the real deal at 27 and a half points going into this game tonight. We do see this young man going out of Seton Hall. Let's meet Coachville and Shenley, and let's send it to the floor and Bob Schellenberg. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chocolate Town, USA. It's the sweetest place on earth. And welcome to game eight of the 2001 PIAA Basketball Championships. In tonight's Quad A Boys Final, representing the East, a record of 30 and one, the Coatesville High School Red Raiders. And representing the West with a record of 29 and 2, the Shenley High School Spartans. And now let's meet the starting lineup. First of all, for Coatesville, head coach Jim Smith, assistant Dave Rohde, Rick Hicks, Mark Bailey, Anthony Buckwash, and John Mobley. Here is the starting five for Coatesville. At a guard, 5'6 senior, wearing double zero, Maurice Bryant. At the other guard, a 5'8 senior, number 12, Tyree Bricker. Starting at a forward, a 6'2 senior, number 10, Kareem Shelton. At the other forward, he's wearing number 30, senior six foot five inch, John Allen. And starting at center, six four senior, he's wearing number 40, Eric McComsey. The Red Raiders from Coastal Area High School. And now let's meet the starting lineup for Shenley. Head coach, Fred Scrocky. His varsity assistant, Jim French. Here is the starting five for the Spartans. At a guard, a 6'2 senior wearing number 55, Nate Watkins. Starting at the other guard, wearing number 11, six foot senior, Charles Jackson. At a forward, 6'4 senior, Number 23, Jack Higgins. At the other forward, a senior, six foot six, number 53, Sean Hawkins. And starting at center, double zero, six nine senior, Nate Kerwig. The Shenley High Spartan. A number correction for Coatesville. Maurice Bryant will be wearing number 20 tonight. Correction 22, Maurice Bryant in uniform 22 for Coatesville. Ladies and gentlemen, your championship officials tonight are Bill Buffington, Jim Pruno, and Rod Marakovic. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd ask you to please rise as we honor the United States of America with the singing of the Star Spangled Banner to be sung tonight by Western Wayne High School Junior, Miss Katie Muhall. And once again, we ask you please remain quiet until she has concluded her performance. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the ragged thread the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Delightful performance of the national anthem. Last ever action, the final game of the weekend. Let's look at the Coatesville and Shenley grids here on the starting five. John Allen, one of the really dynamic talents, the best they've had since Richard Hamilton, and that is a mouthful, but Allen has got it all going on. Maurice Brandt, great point guard, Gary. You'll love him. And John. Jack Higgins, a guy you love for Shenley, he's their leading scorer. Well, he's averaged 18 points a game, but Sean Hawkins, 18 points a game as well, and Nate Gerwig, part of that threesome, almost reminds you of the triplets of DePaul at 14 points, so they're going to try to offset John Allen with a trio of people, but this is going to be an interesting look coming out of the gate. Both, both teams like to press, both teams like to run, both teams like to get a lot of shots up there and create opportunities with their defense and turn them into real points on the other end. This should be a very, very interesting contest here in the 4A, the granddaddy game of the weekend. Red Scrocket, head coach at Shenley, has led them to a 22 and 29 and 2 record. Coatesville comes in at 30 and 1. They're only lost to Lancaster McCaskey, the number one team in the state for much of the year, but they got clipped in the Eastern semis. It's been a long time since the Pittsburgh team's been here. Erie has pretty much dominated the scene on 4A the last few years, but here's Shenley, a name that was synonymous with state championship finals back in the 60s and 70s. Last City League team to hit gold was 1991, Perry beating Pottstown. Jumping up is Nate Gerwig and John Allen. Allen is an elevator man, and Gerwig caught it. No re-jump. And Gerwick, a 6'9 senior, and I mean a solid look. Allen on his way to Seton Hall. Coatesville will be in the red. Shemley in the white. And we're underway. Good man-to-man -man defense coming out real hard here by Coatesville. As we watch Pennsylvania's Championship Network, I want to remind you all the games are live on the internet at PIAA.org as we get underway here. Good offensive look here by Shenley. Pass cut screen. Gerwick, nice look from 10, Gary. He's well, I like, like the fact that they open up the game by reversing the ball several times, showing good patience, and then finding Gerwick for the 12-footer on the right side. Good offensive patience at the half court, and that's what you want to do when you start out here at Urshie. Tyree Brickus. A lot of the offense will go through him. Here comes Allen. Sweeping through, and it's tipped on the way by. I think Jack Higgins may have gotten a hand on this. 2-3 zone employed on the other end. Pretty wide 2-3 zone. The middle high is wide open. There's Bryant from the corner. Left it near Gerwick clearing it. Okay, he is going to be a factor in this game at 6-9, and as athletic as he is. Well, and Jack Higgins can crawl the ladder, too. I'm telling you what. Like the discipline of Shenley here at half court already. Run a lot of pass and cut, pass and cut. Take your time and look for the good shot. Reverse the ball and move the defense. Long three that time by Charles Jackson, but they get it back. Bryant trying to get, but Gerwick keeps it alive. Throw it out towards half court. Nice save by Higgins. Good again. 
Charles Jackson's got his first two. Charles Jackson with a nice little two dribble jump stop and go up strong. 2-3 zone. Now what you want to do is you want to attack this middle down unless you get a steal. And here we go. 2-1. Jackson got out of control that time. And now Coatesville, this is what they love to do. Gets in an imbalance. Give and go. Shot. Good and a foul. Eric McCormsey's got his first two. That's one of the hardest things to teach a kid to do is to finish when you're fouled. But watch him keep his eyes up here. You're going to see a great move by McComsey. He goes up strong. Look at the eyes. He stays right there, and he finishes all the way through. A lot of times what coaches will do is use football tackling dummies and kind of nail guys in practice to get the idea of getting hit when they're going up. And in 4A basketball, you're going to have a lot more bumping and grinding than you see in most other divisions that we've seen all weekend. Comsey, a 6'4 senior. You've got to look at him. Nice free throw there, and they're right back to within one. See, the three comes in so many different ways. There's a tough way of getting a three, but 4-3 right now coming out of the gate. Shenley leads by one. Well, that's Tep. Kept alive by Gerwick. Got to throw the bounce pass in there a lot of times unless you have just a huge guy standing there waiting. Long three off the back of the iron that time by Higgins. Not a good shot. Here comes Coltsville. They love to leak out on the break. Give it up. On the baseline. Good. Kareem Shelton's first two. Well, but the guy that set it up was Tyree Brickus by his penetration and then exposing the baseline of the defense. Great move by Brickus getting down the floor. Gerwig on the baseline. Left it short. McCormsey climbs the iron. Watch Brickus getting the ball always ahead down the floor. He wants to get that defense having to get back on their heels right away. Now the 2-3 zone sets up. And the idea is to beat the zone down the floor. Allen going through and it's tipped on the way by. Goes out of bounds. John Allen's made two passes so far that I think were both made at the wrong time. Once you get inside the foul line, you must make a shot. You don't make a pass. The pass needs to be made stopping at the foul line. So two great passes, but you better have a great set of hands ready to catch them. I always believe it a bad pass is the passer's fault. Gerwig right. alone. Catch and turn. Look at Allen. Whoa, ho, 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 elevator, man. Watch this. Here we go. Transition to game. There's Bryant for Brickett. And let's see. We've got a travel call, or did he step out over there? Stepped on the sideline. Third turnover so far for Coachville. Just blending into a style right now, early. Well, you know, you get in here and you say, well, we played a million games all year. We played in different places. But, you know, you haven't played in front of 7,200, 8,000 people. And that's a little different look for any kid. I don't care what school you play at. It's a sellout right now. Nice anticipation by Bryant to fill the lane. Listen, look at this hustle here. Ball is still on the deck, and they finally Allen puts a fork in it, and he starts it back the other way for Coachville. Shumley has not been as patient as they were in the opening two looks. That's it for three. Well, I got to tell you, I like Brickus' play. I mean, he just stood up there, and that was no second thought about that one at all. Nothing but court. Back out Jackson, top of the key. Reverse the ball, get it back to the top. Nice offensive run there. Five points for Jackson. Both these teams look sharp tonight. Good quick pass. And Ryan from deep in the corner. That was taken too quickly. It's not a good shot that time. Just take it too quickly. You can't take it because you want to. You have to take it because it comes out of your offensive thoughts. Higgins missed everything. Getting used to it. Nice offensive rebound. Back out. Oh, Jackson is on fire early. He's got eight points. I think I might pay a little attention to Mr. Jackson here now if I was Jim Smith and Coach Roll the other side. I think he's proven himself. He's got eight points in the game already. Six four senior loading the gun early. Two, got three, eight. Two three zone invites three point shots on the wing and at the top of the key. John Allen's yet to take a shot for Coachville. Came in averaging 27 and a half. Here's Brickus on the fly. Got Gerwig going to reach in his first. Brickus is like a little gnat. He's always looking to kind of tickle you. He'll either step in there, as we saw a moment ago, could step out and get the three. Look, he gets into the guts of the 2-3 zone and distorts it. And once you're in the middle of the zone or any defense, you have now taken it apart, and that's what Brickus did there. Harry Brickus, 90% free throw shooter on the year as you look at Nate Gerwick, the 6'9 senior for Shenley. Confidently.
Excellent looking stroke. He's got four. Leon Hunt into the game. John Allen so far, and really a non-factor. I mean, Brickus has really been the player here that sparked this team. Point guard's so important in any game, but in, in a game like this, he creates so much, and Brickus has really been the motivating force of this team. Brickus with five. Here comes the press, packing it nicely with the pass to Shemley. Back the other way, there's Jack Higgins with his first two. I'll tell you what, this team is not lined spotting up and looking for the jump shot, and they're very confident shooters. Here's Brickus, long three, tip on the way by. Gerwig controls, and here comes Shenley the other way. The Spartans. Well, Shenley needs to get back into that patient, reverse the ball look against the two-three zone of Coachville now. Long jumper by Sean Hawkins, good. And is there anybody who can't shoot the ball on his team? comes John Allen. They need to get him involved. He hasn't had many touches. There he goes to work. Give and go through the lane and didn't miss it. They missed it with David Ben. Whistle underneath away from the ball. David Ben did yeoman work that time on keeping the ball alive. Now watch this. He'll get the ball. He stays with it on the offensive rebound. Tries to put it back with his left hand. He's going to get hacked on the way up. And the big guy, double zero, Nate Gerwig called with a foul. They get an idea of the Shenley bench. It's his second. That becomes a little now, yeah. yeah. David Ben, a 70% foul shooter, came in averaging six points per game, only a freshman. Get used to seeing this man down in District 1. We're going to get Gerwig out of the game here right now. He cannot stay in there with two fouls. Looks like Troy Mason, the 6'4 senior, will check in for him. Woody's an average is five points per game. There's Gerwig, so they get a little smaller. Well, you, you give away some bulk. I mean, Gerwig is a space eater. And this is the second, and they get the rebound. Shenley by four. As you can see, we'll have that box up for you. There's your time remaining in the opening quarter. <laughs> so you see the little zone look right here, kind of a 1-3-1. One, Not a good shot that time. That was Sean Hawkins. A little quick. Working around for Brickus in the corner. Brickus has been money so far tonight. Brickus with eight points in the first quarter. He has been dynamite. John Allen has yet to get on the board. Here comes Hawkins working down low. Throws it out of bounds. Good pressure that time by Coachville that collapsed in on him. Hawkins got tentative. He looked back the wrong way. He dribbled to the inside. Instead of looking opposite, he looked back to the strong side. There was nothing going on there. A lot of Coachville folks here. Mark Shuey is also here tonight on our exclusive coverage on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. Middle of the 2-3 zone is open right now, and you want to get someone behind the zone a little bit more active. Allen is in behind the zone right now. They want to try to find him. Watch Good job of covering the middle, though, by Shenley. And Brickus with a reach-in for his first. That's first team foul on Coatesville. Get a look at that 2-3 zone next time down. There's a couple different ways you attack it. You attack it baseline behind, then to the middle on a slide down the lane, or you can attack it to the middle opposite, or you can attack it to the middle and then down behind the baseline. There's three different good ways of attacking. You need dribble penetration and body and ball movement. Give David Penn the foul. Work it down low to Hawkins again. He has trouble keeping it going. Now skips it across. But then he looked opposite. Charles Jackson again. That one rattles out. Rebound. Hawkins good. Boy, Hawkins is impressive. I mean, he reached out and grabbed that ball with one hand, brought it back, kept it high, and touched it off the glass. That's four for Hawkins in a well-played first quarter. Good Here quick. comes John Allen. Still not his first shot. Nice reverse and good by Leon Hunt. John Allen's so valuable to this team because everybody's paying attention, so he makes the other players better with a great pass. There'll be people open, right, with everybody collapsing on, on his exactly. game Here, there. Here's the 1-3-1 one, look again. You attack this with skip passes, go middle and baseline. It's really a matchup kind of zone. You're matching up playing man-to-man -man in five different areas. Higgins, a runner. Four shot. Rebound, Allen. Wipes the iron with a second time for the second time, and it gives way to Maurice Bryant. Now Bryant, watch him move down low. Hunt again! 
What set that up, though, was Brickus' penetration. Get the baseline to come up. You expose it, and you see what happens. Coltsville leads for the first time. Well, they led 11-10. Thank you, George Zurich. Well, we'll go to mode again. Interesting Track. way they play the zone. Brick is the smallest guy in the court that plays the back of it. And that's quickness going side to side. Now, they're trying to, they're trying to post him up down there, but basically, you want to attack the 1-3-1 with a 2-1-2 look. Right now, Shelley's going to begin tend to go to the end of the quarter. They'll try to go opposite. Guy's probably going to get the shots from be Larry Bryant. In the corner, Hawkins, good! What a sweet stroke. Good if it goes, and it's wide, and that'll do it. Ooh, nice looking first quarter. Shemley takes the uh, two point lead at 19 17, and I like the flow. Nice Love one. the flow. Good discipline on both teams. Well played, well coached, sharp passing, good hard defense. A lot of good stuff going on. All right, let's uh, have a look now. Mark Shuey, we told you, is uh, going to be around various parts of the Hershey Park Arena. Introducing you to the fans of the like. Let's check out Mark right now. You know, it's been nearly a half century since Coatesville last played in a state championship game, their boys basketball team, in 1952 at the Palester in Philadelphia. Farrell defeated Coatesville. With me is Bubba Lop. Bubba Lop was on that Coatesville team back in 1952. What do you recall about that championship game back in 52 at the Palestra? Well, it was a tough one. We lost a tough ball game, but it's something to remember the rest of your life. And these kids here really make me feel good that I lasted this long to see it again. And if we stick right, we're going to win this thing. Obviously, you've been a fan of Coatesville basketball for a long time. Where do you rank this team as the all-time Coatesville team? It's one of the best. And at this stage, they are the best. Thank you very much. Bob Lop, who almost 50 years ago played in the state championship game for Coatesville. That's the last time they were there until tonight. Bubba and the rest of the Coatesville fans hoping for a gold medal this evening. Thank you, Mark. Mark's done a fabulous job for us all weekend. What do you got? When you talk about good numbers, Coatesville 6 of 11, 55 percent. Shenley 8 of 16, 50 percent. Three offensive rebounds for Shenley, seven points. That's a big number I've seen so far. Allen's first shot is good. He's got two. Coatesville back on the lead again. A little different look here now for Shenley. A little 2-1-2 two, two half-court trap. You try to hit the cross court, and it, and it pulls him. It was a nice change coming out of the gate. Good little move on that side. Nate Watkins couldn't handle the pass, and the turnover will give it back to the Red Raiders here. And I said by Shenley, actually by Coachville coming out, Jim Smith with a nice change in defense. A lot of coaches like to get you off balance by just changing defenses on a timeout or at a quarter break. Here's Allen. They post him up off the window, left it long. Battling for it as Bryant saves it. Now Leon Hunt. Boy, Shenley ferocious on defense. You don't want to leave that ball out there too long. Oh, what a great bounce pass ahead. Hawkins give it up. Oh, Down low. Good again. Sean Hawkins. Sorry, Jed. That just, that just, that's a coach's dream. That's unselfish basketball. The first was a bounce pass down court. You don't see that very often. Then middle, then opposite for the layup. That's beautiful basketball. 2-3 zone. They're going to look to try to hit out in, in the middle eventually. Ricketts for a long three, waiting for the bounce. There's Higgins for the rebound. The state coach Bill's making right here. I think Allen's got to get touches. you got to get him involved. Even just touching the ball sucks the defense in. Then you go baseline or opposite that matchup type zone right now coach Bill's playing but it's how it matches up to your offense here's Higgins deep in the corner with an open look five for Higgins now Brian don't lean too much he spins through the door and loses the handle here comes Charles Jackson whistle and a foul they got Maurice Bryant with a reach in on his first only the second team foul on coach Bill Nate Watkins right in front of us. Take a look. Great spin dribble right here. Keeps the ball alive for a moment. Tries to dish it ahead. And a foul call. Hey, Maurice Bryant, another little bit of jitterbugs out there. I mean, this guy can really move. You have Brian out there standing alongside of Tyrone, Tyree Brickus. I mean, you've got some fast quickness in the first Hawkins. He's had a marvelous first half. He's got 10. Boy, you got to like it.
like his game. He's silky oh. smooth. Big guy who squares the shoulders every time. Always on balance when he shoots. And that's what you want to see with a shooter. Here's John Allen. Going to Seton Hall. Good and one. John Allen can play the guard spot, and he looks over everything. And so he's shooting over the guards. Watch this when he gets the ball on the wing. Look, he's looking over everybody out there. And watch his eyes. He's up. He can go up over top of any guard that's going to try to play him out there. So he becomes a real, real factor. Tough to play. And we're going to see a timeout here by Shenley. A good timeout by Shenley because now you're seeing Allen get involved. He's got four points. It's a, a timeout. Coachville. 5.55 left in the second quarter. Let's check back with Mark. Mark? Oh, Shenley, they're trying to become the first Italy team to win a quad APIAA championship since 1978. That's when Shenley under coach Fred Yee defeated Lebanon 51-50. to You remember that Lebanon team, PIAA fans will certainly remember Sam Bowie, the future NBA star. He was featured on that Lebanon Cedars team. Well, this week, coach Fred Sprocky, he received a good luck call from Yee, wishing them well, that Shenley can become the first team to uh, win that City League team, the first City League team to win the gold here in Hershey since 1978 when Shenley brought it home. John Allen, 85% for the free throw line. I go to Seton Hall. It's expected that Eddie Griffin, who's down in the Philadelphia Roman Catholic, is going to declare for the NBA. It's kind of a shame. Would have been nice to see those two play together if it does indeed happen with Griffin going. And of course, you're going to go play for a coach that comes out of that Duke program, Tommy Hammaker, a guy that knows the game pretty darn well and gets you to play an intelligent game. I like what Shenley has done in this first half. And they reverse the basketball. That's what set up a lot of the good things like this. That's Nate Watkins. Here comes the penetration one. You don't want to get caught napping. They'll get behind you in a big-time hurry. Rickus is the kind of guy that steal your shadow if you had a chance here. Kareem Shelton, good. Great eyes. The guard with great eyes. And they find Shelton underneath for the easy dupes. I like the pace of this game. This is good stuff. Well, it's quick passing. I mean, it's sharp basketball. Both teams on top of their game right now. Very few mistakes thus far here in the first half. Down low for Gerwig. Little catch and turn. He's a handful in there. Well, he's got a great little fake to the inside. A turn around and then the straight up shot with the shoulders squared. I mean, you're just seeing great fundamental basketball here. Well coached teams. I think it's kind of a little bit one, two, two, look, go middle, go back out, and then go baseline. For Shelton again. Oh, it's just middle, baseline. I mean, the concepts. I mean, both teams just have the concept of just reading the game perfectly. But it's the finish that really is making it fun. There he goes again. Look at him in there. A little catch and turn. Now, what was great about that, the first time, Gurry turned to the left, the full turn. This time, he faked the drop step, turned to the middle, and showed you can reverse it, too, and buries it from the middle. Great stuff. I mean, again, most people need to be able to turn both ways. Here's Allen. Look at that. One hand. Good. That wave it off. Problem is, Allen went in the air and put himself at the mercy of the defense. And that is not what you can ever do as an offensive player. Watch this. He'll go up in the air. Now watch. He's now helpless. There you are. Gerwig holds his ground, takes the charge. You ready to get Fred Scrocky and see if he's got a pulse? Because that's Gerwig with two fouls taking that charge. You got it. Yeah, wow. He just, he just let a breath out. There's high low again. It's Hawkins who's been hot in the first half. So is Charles Jackson for three. That's off the front of the iron. Watch Allen track it down. That's some tight spaces. Gets it away to Maurice Bryant. Keeps the dribble alive. Shake and bake. McComey in and scores! Brick has actually lost the ball there and was picked up on the other end by McComsey flying down. And McComsey said, thank you very much. I'll lay this in if you don't mind. Way too far out. Not part of the offense. Back in is Hawkins. Watch Bryant. Oh, nice reach in, but a foul. He had the right idea, but a lot of the time, you're just not going to get a break from the crew on one of those kind of plays. Wow, is this game fast. You know, Bryant's one of these compact pocket rocket type of guys. He's only five foot six, and I mean, he is a wizard off the dribble. John Wooden once said, be quick, but don't hurry. I thought Bryant hurried a little bit that time getting down, but they create so well. 
McKee and Brickus on the other side. I mean, those two little gnats get inside your defense, and they become very, very huge in what they set up. They got 322 to go. Let's peek inside a little bit. Let's go to the Shenley huddle. Well, in the Shenley going? huddle right now, I, I think they want to make sure they continue to get good shots out of their offense. And I think uh, pulled the trigger a little bit too quickly the last couple of times. So Fred Scrocky's over there talking about continue to reverse the basketball. We'll get good shots out of what we do. On Coachville's side, I think they want to figure out a way to get John Allen more involved in the offense rather than trying to take the points out of individual ability, which I think he's been doing too much so, so far. 27 and a half points a game for that young man heading to Seton Hall. But right now, He's not as big a factor in the game as I think he could be if he starts to move a little bit more without the basketball. There's that nice end zone cam, give you an idea. Okay, Into the game is Ryan Sweet, 6'6 six, six sophomore for Coatesville. You need someone in the high post here and then someone behind the zone. There's the high post. Look, there's a man in behind the zone. The zone can't see it. Now you'll flash high and put another man in behind the zone. Just keep rotating. Zone can't see behind it. Allen, little push off that time on Sean Hawkins. That's his first. The problem I see with Allen right now is it's kind of the same problem we saw a little bit with Tanisha Wright in the last game. He's good with the basketball right now, but he's tending to stand without it against the zone. And he needs to do a little bit more movement. We'll see if uh, Fred Scrocky gets him involved a little bit more without the ball. So right now, he's, he's useless out here. And against the zone, he's not going to get a lot of driving lanes. He needs that brick to create the steal. Jackson at the foot ways with Bryant. Cuts through. Missed it. Rebound. Battle for it. It's a foul. And they might be looking at Gerwig if they are. That's his third. Gerwig has been an absolute sensational player in the first half. And he's going to go to the bench right here. Look at this. Big guy coming in. And I'll tell you what, when he comes down in your back, you know if we head to the other end for one and one out of the floor for Shenley, James Cunningham. Cunningham, a 6'1 junior. Take your best post player now out of the game with 244 to go here in the half. Probably not terribly damaging at this point, but still three fouls in. They're in the one on one the rest of the half. Allen on the front end is good. Eventually an 85% foul shooter. You look at Allen, he reminds you of a Kobe Bryant that played here for Lower Marion in his last high school game before he went to the Lakers. Same kind of look, not quite as big. Seven for Allen. The quiet seven, though, and Coatesville rides the lead by one. One, two, two half-court trap now. A little change again. Look at what it does. Makes a tough pass. You gotta find the middle. And then you gotta go to the baseline. Middle, opposite baseline. Long three, good by Higgins. Get He's got the, eight. Get to the side where the trap is coming from, and you're going to have good things happen. Nice job by Shenley of recognizing, getting it to the middle, and then kicking it to the open man on the far side. They go inside for Sweet. He can't hang on, and here comes Shenley back the other way. Long guy to crawl the ladder to get that one. So here we go again. One, two, two like the half-court trap. Now they show it. Now they just drop off into a man-to-man. -man. Driving through. Dribble drive. Tipping at it. And it's controlled by Coatesville as Bryant missed. Here comes Maurice Bryant. He knows one speed. That's quick. Shelton may have traveled. He Sh did. Shelton couldn't get the handle. And while calling the hand behind Gary, didn't mean to interrupt yeah. there. Just shuffle the feet a little bit just for a moment. Tenth turnover here in the first half. Into the game, Michael Scott will see him for the first time as he'll give Bryant a breather with 1.48 left in the half. We're just looking at a straight man to man now. Brickus and McComsey are due back for Coatesville at the next stop. You notice Shenley doesn't have the guy that can drive to the basket like a Brickus on the other side. They're more of a, a jump shooting team, quick jump shooting team. They like to throw the pass to penetrate. And you know, the other side, Coachville likes to use the dribble to penetrate. So two different styles in a sense. Another turnover against Shenley. Here comes Mr. Brickus back into the game. Stepped on the line. And what he does is create so well. So you have Brian and Brickus in there. And these two guys, I think, are the keys to this game. Get a high post, a man behind the zone, and a guard on the other wing. Look at Bryant, only five foot six. There's Brickus. He's not much taller at 5'9". Uh, Look at Allen. Hello. 
They bought a double post high. They put Brian and Brickett high, and they had Allen just kind of go to sleep behind the zone. And what Murray said about behind the zone, alley oop and dunk it away. They turned off the seatbelt light up in there. He was way up high. Did they see anybody going up? And he said, yeah, just one guy on the elevator, and here he comes. Look at this. Up and down with authority. Oof. Yowzer. It's the kind of place you see in the 4A game. That's actually the first dunk of the weekend. It was a beaut. Final 35 coming up Dangerous here in the first half. To that backcourt line. Boy, did that wake the place up. 30 seconds to go. Shenley doing a nice job here being patient. Coachville wants the possession at the end here. They're trying to pick up their defense, bringing it out. Shelly's got to be a little bit careful here. The five-second call has been called very quickly all weekend long. Six-feet rule. If you're in the six feet, they start counting. Take us in. Be careful. Right here. What you got to do is try to set it up and get a 1-4 flat, drive to the basket, and create for a three. Team wants a three to end right here. Here it comes. Kicked out. That's going to leave one second. So they're basically going to catch and shoot off the set piece here. What people like to do right here is try to go for the lob. Long shot, got it, it goes! Yes! Have it! Charles Jackson at the buzzer! Charles Jackson at the buzzer! With, the with 11, let's look again! Squares his shoulders, turns, eyes it up, and banks it home. Usually you gotta call that at the park, but tonight it's a huge three that counts on the board. 30 only saying two. Oh, they're only saying two now. He stepped on the line. So 34-32, though. Shenley up by two at the half and a great game. What a game. What a first half. As good a quad A start as we've seen in years. Well, Delighted to have you here on the Pennsylvania Cable Network. Quickly, thoughts? Sound by me. Well played. Both teams know what they want to do. John Allen not really totally involved in the game yet. Could be more in the second half. Shenley doing all the right things, but they've got a little problem right now with Gerwig on the bench with three, and that will be a storyline in the second half as well. First half highlights, statistics, and more coming next. You're watching exclusive live coverage of the 2001 PAAA playoffs. This is the Pennsylvania Cable Network, Pennsylvania's championship network. Back to historic Hershey after this timeout. You're watching Boys PIAA Championship Basketball exclusively on PCN, Pennsylvania's championship network.